Hey there, it's David Gordon from Theater Mania. It is Monday, August 3rd. We are in August already. I don't know how that happened. Come on. <laughs> Uh, I'm here with Emily Carey, star of the new Netflix and uh, BBC series, Get Even. Uh, it is a really cool thing. I watched a couple uh, episodes of it this weekend. I'm still working on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but you play a major part in it. I guess so. It's very much an ensemble show. So everyone is a very important cog in the big wheel of Get Even. But it's a pretty cool show. I'm glad you're liking it so far. Yeah. You've got, to, you've got to stick with it. Yeah. It's, uh, well, tell me about how this project came to you. Did you like, did your agent send you a script? Did you audition for it? So originally with this project, so many roles were cast kind of blindly uh -huh. and the original audition tapes and the scripts that were floating about were just rough scenes and no one really auditioned for a specific role in the beginning, <laughs> um, which was interesting. And I read a scene that was originally written for Olivia. Mm -hmm. And I went in, my agent got me the audition. It was like quick five minutes in and out and I didn't think much of it. And then later down the line, they asked me to do a audition tape at home for the role of Mika. And it was the first I'd heard of her. I didn't know who she was or how she fitted into the story, but she seemed pretty cool. I sent the tape in and then Literally within 24 hours, we were doing the chemistry reads and screen testy type things, and it was insane. Wow, that moved along very quickly. Yeah, yeah, it was very fast moving at the beginning. What? Um, tell me about tell me about your character and how she factors into the plot of Get Even. Okay, so Get Even centers around the four DGM girls. Stands for Don't Get Mad because they don't get mad. They get even, they take down the patriarchy in the school and basically go after all the bullies, but they all come from different walks of life. They each have their own individual aesthetic, if that makes sense, which is a super interesting thing to watch on screen. Yeah. And I play Kitty Way's best friend, Mika Kavanagh. So when you see Kitty's world, that's where Mika comes in. She is super sweet. She likes to see the world through rose tinted glasses. She's very trusting super bubbly and she has this air of innocence about her which i love playing yeah what um, what was it like to film the show because it is an ensemble piece and you have a theater background even though you're you know you're 17 you've still done uh, like more theater than a lot of people have <laughs> <laughs> um it was super fun to film we had such a huge cast there were i think 18 of us in total like 18 ensemble cast all super young. I was the youngest, which was fun. I was the baby of the group. So I was looked after all the time, um, but it was aging between 16 and 26. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny because the lady who plays Kitty, Kim, she's the eldest at 26 and I was 16 and there was like 10 years between us, but you wouldn't be able to tell on screen. Yeah. Um, but it was so, so much fun. We just had the best summer of our lives and yeah, I, I hadn't experienced anything like that since doing The Sound of Music, which was, of course, another big cast because we had three teams of kids, three teams of six kids. There were so many people around all the time. Uh, I love working in big groups. It's just fun, and there's always there's always something going on. Yeah. What? Um, how did how did your theater background? Because you were in Shrek and the West End. Who did you play in Shrek and the West End? I played Baby Shrek, and I was also Grumpy the Dwarf, and I understudied Young Fiona. Awesome. What was what? A, what was that show like to do? Oh, that show was a dream. I mean, it's the best first job for any kid. Yeah. Shrek is the sort of musical that I would have wanted to go and see anyway. I mean, it's just vibrant and fun. Such a fun show. And the entire cast was so, so sweet, and they were all used to working with kids, and... Again, it was fun because I got to wear all the prosthetics and I was painted green every night. And I even wore a beard when I played Grumpy. And I think it was a lot more fun than playing the princess, if I'm honest. It sounds like it, it really was fun. It was insane. It was it was a lot. It was a big ish first job, even though you weren't on stage more than like two scenes in the show. It was a lot with the prosthetics and the makeup, but it was all worth it. It was so much fun. How long did the makeup and the prosthetics take? Do you remember? I think it took about an hour-ish to get on before the show. And I was in the opening scene as well. And then midway through, they do the switch to Grumpy. So I played both roles in one night. 
And then it was, yeah, it was crazy. It would take, I think, half an hour to get one off and then another 45 minutes to get the other one on. And then I'd make it on stage in time for the last few scenes as Grumpy. And then you'd bow as Grumpy. Yeah. Yeah, we had this big, the last number in Shrek, we had this big I'm a Believer right. song. It was insane. Um, and I got to fake play the drums as Grumpy the Dwarf, which was so much, it was just a ball. We had a blast every night. That was at the Drury Lane, right? Yeah, this Royal Drury Lane. That theater is enormous. It that is. Stage is one of the biggest stages I've ever seen. I remember seeing Oliver there years ago, and I remember the set just like kept coming out. It like felt like it went on forever. That stage. Yeah, it's huge. It's really big. Yeah. What? Uh, who are? Who is? Uh, who is in the Sound of Music? Who are the Captain and Maria? So Michael Xavier right. played the captain and he actually right. since then has been my mentor. I trained with him for seven years at his musical theater studios in London. And now I'm a patron of MX Masterclass, which is uh -huh. very, very exciting. Um, he's, he's insane. He's incredible. Obviously has conquered Broadway, West End, Screen. He's done it all. And he's yeah. such an incredible person as well. He's lovely and like a surrogate dad. And then um, the Maria was Charlotte Wakefield, who is also insane voice. She is gorgeous to watch on stage. And we got along really well. I mean, I was 10 at the time. Right. Then a kid in the sound of music, everyone looks after you so well. Um, but also on that show, I worked with Imogen Gurney, who was in my team on Shrek as well. And she's one of my best, best friends. And we've known each other for forever. And we just really bonded on that show. I was in The Sound of Music once, many, many years ago. Really? Who did I, you play? I was a child and I played Max. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> that was that was a delightful summer camp experience. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. What? Um, so you filmed Get, Get Even last summer. Mm -hmm. what, um, what was the highlight of filming for you? Oh, that is tough. That is such a hard question. I'm not sure, I'm sorry, but I bet it's a good one though. Okay, well, the highlight, it's so cliche, but the people, I mean, we just became yeah. so, so close in such a short space of time. I don't know if you watched the show Love Island. Yeah, it's I know Love Island. Love Island, you think when you watch them on TV, how can these people get so close in such a short space of time? Like you don't even know each other and suddenly you're best friends. But we had the Islander experience. We were pushed together really quickly. As I said, it was a quick turnaround at the beginning. And next thing we know, we were literally like brothers and sisters. It was amazing. And I'm still so close with them all. Um, and it's seeing how far people are coming from that show as well. Everyone is doing amazing things. And it's so good when you see deserving people getting what they deserve and doing well in the world. Um, I think, yeah, that the people, the people is definitely the highlight. What was it like for you? Did you watch it when it was first run on the BBC earlier? Yeah. What was that like for you? Oh, I hate watching myself. <laughs> I think I agree. Every yeah. it. it's 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 because I'm such a perfectionist, so I'll like pick apart my performance instead of actually enjoying it for what it is. Yeah. So so I don't like watching myself, but the first time. The first time I saw the show was in Manchester. Uh -huh. We did a screening at Media City in the big BBC building and most of the cast came together and a load of the crew and we all just sat in a screening room and watched it. And everyone was excited and scared. It was like stage fright. I always get the jitters before I watch something for the first time because once it's there, you like you can't change it and you can't take it back. But with Get Even, it was good because it wasn't too long ago. I yeah. hate watching myself from like years ago and cringing, but yeah. this wasn't too bad. I was very proud of what we'd created and I'm excited for the world to see it. And so far it's been well received. What are you were or what were you working on at the time when everything shut down? Like did you have any projects that you were in the middle of that got cancelled or anything? Um, I had one super secret project booked in that I know everyone's going to be excited about. Um, and that's been postponed into October. But lockdown actually brought some opportunities for me, which is great. I've got things in the pipeline. 
But just as Corona blew up and everything shut down, I was actually in LA uh -huh. for pilot season. And I came back the day before all the borders closed. Like, the right. day it was so close, the day before, which was intense. But we made it out alive. Was it your first time in Los Angeles? Uh, no, my first time was in 2016, and I've been at least once a year since then. It's my favorite place in the whole world. It's crazy, right? It's like a different world. Yeah, it's it's insane. Like the pace of things, it's so fast moving. But then on one on one side, it's so fast and busy all the time, and then the other side, you have like the laid back. You have the beach oh, right there. It just doesn't move. Yeah, it's so it's it's crazy. There's like two worlds in one. I love it there though, and the weather. It's currently raining in the UK, as always. Yeah, as always. <laughs> what, um, do you have like acting goal, like do you have career goals that you want to accomplish? Like do you think like that? Yeah, I'm, well I'm very much like a in the moment, go with the flow kind of person when it comes to work, especially as an actor and anyone in the film, TV and theatre industry you never know when the next job's coming. So it's always really hard to plan ahead, but like long-term goals, I'd love to do some sort of movie musical and merge the, my two favorite things together, which is theater and film. That would just be a dream come true. Um, yeah, that's my that's my main long-term goal. I'd also love to do a horror film because- Oh, that'd be cool. Fun. Yeah. Do you listen to music? Like, are you a musical theater geek? Yes, 100%. Theater kid through and through. What are you listening to right now? What are your favorites? Right now, uh, obviously rekindled my Hamilton obsession since it came out on Disney Plus. I did go through the very obsessive phase and it's being brought back out, which I'm not mad about. I kind of yeah. like it. No. Um, what else am I listening to currently? I listen to a lot of Six the Musical. Of course. And everybody's talking about Jamie, which you guys don't have over no, there. No, we don't have Jamie. And we only just got Six. Six was supposed to open the night that the theater shut down here. Awful, absolutely yeah. awful. Six is incredible. I saw it, I saw it on its first night back in the arts theater when they went on tour, I think, and then came back and it was insane. It's such a brilliant show. Yeah. I like, love it when you get to go see it when it's back. But, well, we, we saw it, we saw it, uh, we saw a preview of it like the week before the shutdown. So we- Oh my God, amazing. My wife is obsessed with the, uh, with the album. <laughs> It's such a good show. Yeah. It's such a good show. And I love that it's it's just like six women, well, nine if you count the band, which of course right. you count. Just nine women on a stage holding yeah. the stage in these incredible costumes and just yeah. singing. It's it's amazing. I love yeah. that show. Six is great. You should listen to Beetlejuice if you haven't already. I'm surprised Beetlejuice has Beetlejuice. Uh, Yeah. I but. wanted to come here ASAP. It needs to come to the West End. Yeah, it sure. back. I think it will though. Oh, I I'm think sure. it's okay. And there's your next. Uh, there's your next audition. <laughs> that that would be a cool role to play, Lydia. Yeah, yeah, that's the dream. Proper leading lady. There are so few, like authentic teenager roles, um, in theatre. So that's one of the few, and yeah. I'd love that. That would be amazing. Yeah, Emily, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This has been so much fun. My pleasure. It has been fun. And you can see Emily and Get Even uh, on Netflix now. And it's a cool show and everybody should watch it. Yeah, go watch Get Even. Also, if you're in the UK, it's still on BBC iPlayer, not on Netflix UK yet, but Netflix everywhere else. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Me. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.